Chemistry lecture number 65, specific heat, heat of fusion, and heat of vaporization. It takes energy to raise the temperature of a substance. The amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius is its specific heat. Different substances have different specific heats. Aluminum has a specific heat of 0 0.9023 joules per uh, gram degree Celsius. Um, oops, this is supposed to be 0.9025, sorry. Anyway, this means that uh, it takes 0.903 joules of aluminum to raise the temperature of one gram of aluminum by one degree Celsius. We can use a formula to calculate the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of a substance. And the formula is Q equals MC delta T. Q is the energy in joules, M is the mass in grams, C is the specific heat of the substance in joules per gram degree Celsius, and change in temperature, delta T, the triangle means change in, so change in temperature in degrees Celsius. And you get the change in temperature by subtracting the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Here's a problem. Ice has a specific heat of 2.06 joules per gram degree Celsius. How much energy does it take to raise the temperature of 6 grams of ice at negative 5 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius? So we're trying to find the energy needed to raise the temperature. The mass of ice M is 6 grams. And the specific heat of ice is 2.06 joules per gram degree Celsius. So to raise the temperature of, uh, so to raise 1 gram of ice by one degree Celsius, you have to add 2.06 joules of energy. Okay, so the change in temperature is we're gonna raise it up to zero degrees from an initial temperature of negative five Celsius. So zero minus negative five is positive five. So that's a five degree temperature change, all right? Q equals MC delta T. M is six. C, 2.06. Triangle T is five. And we set it up this way. You can see how the uh, units cancel. Grams cancel and then degrees Celsius cancels, you're left with joules. And if you multiply this out, you'll get 61.8 joules of energy. So to raise the temperature of six grams of ice from zero, from negative five to zero, you have to add that much energy. If you heat a block of ice and measure the change in temperature over time, something interesting happens when the ice reaches zero degrees. And the following graph is a plot of temperature versus time. All right, so here is a uh, heating curve for uh, H2O. So we have ice at negative five, and what happens is <clears throat> over time, heat is added. So as time increases, the amount of energy you add to the uh, substance increases. Anyway, um, as you add energy, the temperature of the ice increases. So in our previous example, we went from negative five all the way up to zero. And then once it reaches zero degrees, if you continue to add heat, the temperature does not increase. It stays flat. All right, well, what's happening here? Well, what's happening here is that it's melting, and this Q here represents the energy needed to melt something. And I have Q equals HFM, and we're gonna explain what that is in just a bit. Okay, so this is how the melting point of a substance uh, is, oh, wait a minute, I need to uh, mention something else. Okay, so um, notice that the ice increases in temperature until it reaches zero degrees. And then at zero degrees, the ice does not increase in temperature. It stays at zero degrees, even though it continues to absorb heat. So at this temperature, at zero degrees, the added heat will not change the temperature. Uh, the heat will, however, change the ice from a solid into a liquid. So all along here, it's being converted from solid ice into liquid water. All right, so this is the solid phase. And then here we're going from solid to liquid. Okay, so this is how the melting point of a substance is determined. Heat is added to a solid, and when the temperature stops changing and remains constant, you've reached the melting point. The energy needed to convert one gram of a solid into a liquid when it's at its melting point is the uh, heat of fusion. And sometimes we call it the enthalpy of fusion. Heat of fusion for ice is 334 joules per gram. And this means that it, that it takes uh, 334 joules of energy to melt one gram of ice when it's at zero degrees Celsius. To calculate the amount of uh, energy needed to melt a certain amount of uh, substance, we use the formula Q equals HFM. Q is the energy in joules. H sub F is the heat of fusion in joules per gram. M is the mass of the substance in grams. Let's try a problem. How much energy does it take to melt six grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius. So we're trying to find Q, the energy needed to melt the ice. 
That's the heat of fusion, 334 joules per gram, and we're trying to melt 6 grams of ice. So Q equals HFM. So HF is 334 joules per gram, M is 6 grams, and you can see how the units cancel. The grams will cancel here, and you'll be left with joules. So 334 times 6, that's going to give me 2004, or in significant figures, 2.00 times 10 to the third joules. So this is how much energy you need to add to 6 grams of ice to get it to convert from solid ice into liquid water. And the temperature won't change though, but the physical state will change. When solid ice at zero degrees becomes liquid water at zero degrees, uh, the addition of heat will cause the temperature to increase. Different states of matter have different specific heats. The specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. How much energy does it take to raise the temperature of 6.00 grams of water at 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius? All right, so we're trying to solve for the energy again, trying to find how much energy. M is 6 grams, and then that's the specific heat of water. Okay, so that's the energy we have to add to a gram of water to get it to increase in temperature by 1 degree. All right, so the change in temperature, it's going to go from 0 degrees to 100, so 100 minus 0 is 100, so that's a 100 degree temperature change. Q equals MC delta T, M is 6, C is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, the change in temperature is 100, and again, the units cancel, grams cancel, uh, degrees Celsius cancel, well, you're left with joules, 6 times 4.18 times 100 gives me 2508, or 2.51 times 10 to the third joules. If we continue to plot the change in temperature of our uh, 6 grams of liquid water, we see that the temperature increases from 0 degrees to 100 degrees. But at 100 degrees, the temperature stays constant as heat is added. So here's a continuation of our uh, graph. So before, we took ice at negative 5, and when we heat added heat, the temperature went up until it reached 0 degrees. And then once it reached 0 degrees, when we added heat, the temperature didn't change, but it did change its physical state from solid to liquid. And then we're saying that we're adding energy once it all becomes liquid at 0 degrees. And if you add energy to the liquid water, the temperature increases until it reaches 100 degrees. And then if you add heat, the temperature doesn't change at 100 degrees. So the addition of heat to liquid water at 100 degrees will not raise the temperature, but it'll convert liquid water into steam or vapor. So when the temperature of the liquid remains constant in spite of the addition of heat, you've reached the boiling point. So when it goes constant like this, that's when you know you've reached the boiling point. Likewise, when it stays constant here, you know you've reached the melting point. The energy needed to convert a liquid at its boiling point into a gas is the heat of vaporization, H sub V. And sometimes this is called the enthalpy of vaporization. The heat of vaporization for water is 2260 joules per gram. And this means that it takes 2260 joules of energy to convert one gram of water at its boiling point into vapor. To calculate the energy needed to vaporize a substance, we use the formula Q equals HVM. So Q is the energy in joules, H sub V is the heat of vaporization in joules per gram, and M is the mass of the substance in grams. How much energy does it take to convert 6 grams of water in, at 100 degrees into vapor? All right, so we're calculating the energy. So this time it's not a, a temperature change, but it's a change of state. So H sub V is 2260, mass is 6. So Q, the energy needed to vaporize the uh, water, is going to be heat of vaporization times mass. H V is 2260, M is 6, and then grams cancel. 2260 times 6 gives me 13,560, or 1.36 times 10 to the fourth joules. So that's how much energy it takes to uh, vaporize six grams of water when it's at 100 degrees Celsius. Once all the water has been converted into vapor, uh, the addition of heat will cause the vapor to increase in temperature. 
The specific heat of water vapor is 2.02 .02 joules per gram degree Celsius. So the following graph shows the increase in temperature after the water has been vaporized. Okay, so in the previous problem, we calculated the energy needed to convert um, liquid water into vapor. So all along here, uh, the temperature is not increasing, but the uh, liquid is being converted into vapor. So the energy does not raise the energy that's added doesn't raise the temperature. The energy instead converts liquid into gas. And then along here, Q equals mc delta t. Uh, we can calculate the energy needed to raise the temperature of the gas once all the liquid has been turned into gas. How much energy does it take to raise the temperature of uh, 6 grams of water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius to 237 degrees Celsius? All right, well, once again, we're solving for Q. Mass of uh, vapor is 6 grams. And it's a change in temperature problem, so we need the specific heat. And this is the specific heat of steam. That's the energy we have to add to steam to get its temperature to increase by one degree. All right, and the change in temperature, we're going from 100 to 237. So 237 minus 100, that's a 137 degree temperature change. All right, so Q, the energy needed to change the temperature is gonna be MC delta T, M is six. C is 2.02, .02. change in temperature is 137. Grams cancel. Degrees Celsius cancel, we're left with joules. Six times 2.02 .02 times 137 gives this number and 1.66 times 10 to the third joules in scientific notation. Now what is the total amount of energy needed to convert six grams of ice at negative five degrees Celsius into vapor at 237 degrees Celsius? So what the question is asking is, if you took ice, six grams of ice at, this is supposed to be negative five, sorry. Six grams of ice at negative five degrees Celsius and we heat it all the way. So we raise the temperature of the ice to the melting point and then we add heat until it melts and then we add heat until the temperature goes up to 100 and then we add heat until it vaporizes, and then we add heat until the temperature goes up to uh, 237. Well, we solved all these individual parts. We figured out that to uh, raise the temperature of the ice was 61.8, and then we figured out that the energy needed to melt the ice into water was two times 10 to the third, and then we figured out the energy needed to raise the temperature of the water from zero to 100 is 2.51 times 10 to the third, and then we figured out the energy needed to vaporize the water once it was at 100 degrees was 1.36 times 10 to the fourth joules. And then the energy needed to raise the temperature of the uh, vapor from 100 to 237 is 1.66 times 10 to the third. So all we have to do is just add all of these up. So here's the energy to raise the temperature of the ice. Here's the energy needed to melt the ice. Here's the temperature needed to raise the, uh, here's the energy needed to raise the temperature of the water up to the boiling point. Here's the energy needed to vaporize the water at the boiling point. And then here's the energy needed to um, raise the temperature of the vapor once it's reached the boiling point. So if you add all these together, it adds up to 1.98 times 10 to the fourth joules. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 65, Specific Heat, Heat Effusion, and Heat of Vaporization.